adventurers, and happy new year. Welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David. My name is Blake. And we are here to wrap up 2021. So, it's been a very uh, voyage-filled year, I would say. I think that's safe. I would say so, too. Yeah. Way more than last year's wrap-up. That's right. We definitely got a lot more done. And uh, we're going to just reminisce and look back with everybody. Does that sound to you? That sounds amazing. Let's do it. Awesome. So, uh, I guess what makes the most sense, let's start with what were some of your favorite things we did this year. You want to do like a top three? Yeah, top three is always our favorite thing to do. We'll do top three episodes that came out. 2021. Of course, 2021. Yep. That's the key there. So I'm going to start with number three being... Okay, so we're going to start to kind of go up. Yep. So, oh, big reveal. <laughs> so uh, number three, we've already mentioned before on our list, but with a little bit more expanded list that we've gotten with, you know, added on from our uh, one year anniversary special we did, I would definitely say still Smitty's in Mississippi is still in the top three. Absolutely. The Damon and the robotics that he has from, you know, you know, showbiz pizza and uh, the Chuck E. Cheese. Those are definitely some of the coolest things you can see. And I mean, it's a great experience overall. I mean, it's hard to believe that that was still just this year. Yeah. I mean, it feels like, you know, we've known Damon forever now, but it's still only been since 2020. Yeah. Or got, sorry, 2021. Yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it got docked down a little bit for me, but it's just, it's still top three, which is pretty good for how many places we've been. That's definitely Oh yeah, I good, agree. Good place to be on the list. And I got a feeling it's not the last we're going to see a Smitty's or Damon. No, I definitely do not think that's <laughs> the case. Uh, so let's see, number three for me, I think I'm going to have to go with uh, the Museum of Osteology Ooh. in uh, Oklahoma City. That was the one with all the bones of all the animals. There was over 300 different, like, complete skeletons of different creatures there. Yeah. That was really cool. That definitely just it being in Oklahoma was just one of those, like, that's just... It's such a random place for it. Yeah. Yeah. And even there was a location supposedly in Florida that closed. That was the original was in Oklahoma. Anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's just, that is, and it's by the same guy, I believe, too. Right. Yeah. They used to have a chain them. and they were like, yeah, we're just going to focus on this. Yeah. One. But that just shows you that you got to pay attention everywhere you go. You never know what you're going to find. Yeah. It may not seem like, you know, you're going to see this on the side of the road there, but then boom, there it is. Yeah. All right. What's your number two? Number two, I would definitely have to do the Medieval Torture Museum in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Good choice. That's one of those ones, not for the faint of art, we even warned you in the video beforehand, but I just thought, I'm a big horror movie fan, like horror in general, and I just like how it's not as much of a worry museum like a lot of them are, it's right. more it just represents with models. And a lot of them might be hard to look at, but it's interesting how that is forms of uh, capital punishment that we used to have that obviously most of the civilized part of the world isn't going to be using anymore. But, right, not yeah, anymore. But yeah. we did all kind of come from those yeah, roots. And we learned from it too. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a little gruesome, but uh, it was yeah. fun. Very spooky in there. Oh yeah. I love the lighting. It was just so dim and dark. Yeah. They do a great job of uh, setting the atmosphere. I think it did better than a lot of uh, haunted houses I've been into where I'm just like, it's kind of corny. I think they did a way better job of having it with that atmosphere without you know. Especially when you think of this people actually went through all of this. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That, that's the part that's like, wow. That's how they know that they got you how they wanted you to be, is when you can cringe and feel what's happening. Like, I don't want that to happen to me. And I see how back in the day when, you know, the law of the land was, you do this, this can happen to you. Yeah. It might not have deterred everybody, but it definitely got a lot of people to know. Oh, yeah, yeah. like if you knew yeah. you were gonna lose your hand for stealing from 7-Eleven or something, oh, yeah. you're, you're probably gonna yeah. be like, eh, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think my number two, very different from your number two. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with Silver Dollar City, a uh, theme park over in Branson, Missouri. Yeah. Uh, big theme park fan, I know we both are. Yeah. Uh, I actually hadn't made it to this one before. This was our first time there, and it was gorgeous. Yeah. It is an awesome park. Uh, the rides were top notch. Mm -hmm. The the theming was really on point. Everybody who worked there, all the team members were fantastic. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, and the other cool thing about it is that we already went to the other technical Silver Dollar City that was in Gatlinburg, Pan Forge true. area. In Dollywood. Dollywood. Yeah, Dollywood. Now, Dollywood's good, but I did like Silver Dollar City a little bit more. It seemed to like have just more of that spunk about it, I guess. It, it kind of had more of that, yeah, that kind of family flair. Yeah. Like, Dollywood was awesome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. We love it. We're definitely going to go back. 
Uh, Dollywood actually, that location used to be a Silver Dollar City. Yep. And then uh, Dollywood and her corporation mm -hmm. bought it out and turned it into Dollywood. So there's a lot of similarities. You could tell, you know, kind of had that same vibe a little bit. Yep. But something about Silver Dollar City just hit a little different. And I love it. I, the, the rides were a lot more um, unique, I feel like. There's some of them that yeah. had a very similar theme. Just like if you go to any, you know, theme park that has like sure, a Sure, we're going to have like, oh, we got the drop tower. Yeah, We've yeah. got the, yeah. But like even like the Tom Sawyer one, like I can't think of many that was theme a lot parks of fun. that would have a Tom Sawyer themed ride. Yeah. And I, I liked it. And that was one of my favorite rides there. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Way to blast. Yep. And uh, I guess so for number one, I would have to pick this one in a state that you really wouldn't think of, super small, is in Connecticut we had the Witch's Dungeon. Oh. And great little one. I already mentioned horror and movies. This one, he kind of made sure to let us know that it wasn't just horror movies that he was going off of. He definitely wanted to highlight all the classic movie monsters. Right. Just cinema in general. Cortland there yep. did a great job of just giving us kind of like a private tour. Such a nice guy, yeah, too. Yeah. Very nice. And I mean, we're talking about a guy that knows, you know, Luke Skywalker and Vincent Price personally, especially <laughs> since, I mean, Vincent Price hasn't been with us for a long time. Yeah. Shows you how much history and knowledge that we can get from someone like that. They pick his brain. That, I mean, how many people get that opportunity to do that? And, and the fact that it's now open year-round. Yep. That's really cool. I mean, he's starting to bring it to that sense. It's a lot more like appointment-based only right now, but he's definitely with his new location able to branch out a little bit more to where more people are able to see it than what originally it was only during October. Right, especially with their new yeah. location. And he was talking about that they're going to do like a Christmas theme. Mm -hmm. They're going to do different stuff throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I think that's somewhere we're going to end up going back someday. Yeah. And I liked it a lot. He was, and he was just very enjoyable, you know, Post, I would say. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. I don't think we could have asked for a better guy to help show us something as cool as that. And again, who would have thought Connecticut? <laughs> right? Yep. You don't think movie mods? Oh, Connecticut. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, number one is really tough, mm -hmm. but I think I have to give it to. It's kind of going opposite of yours. Okay. You got the movie monsters. So, it's, we got yin and yang here. There you're right. See, that's why it works well. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Christmas movies at Castle Noel. That's, a, that's another good... That place over yeah. there in Ohio, it just it's right outside of Cleveland. Uh, Medina, I yep. think it was, yep. right? It just blew me away. This was such a massive collection of Christmas things. I mean, from all of my favorite movies, they, they had the Turbo Man suit from Jingle All the Way. That alone was worth going for. Don't forget for. about Booster. Uh, nobody wants Booster. We don't talk about him. <laughs> Yang and Yang, I like how Booster looks. Booster did look cool, but yeah. we all know Turbo Man's where it's in. Yeah. But then we had stuff from The Grinch. Uh, we had stuff from Elf. They had the slide from A Christmas the Story. The slide from A Christmas yeah. Story, which after seeing The Christmas Story House, yeah. it was great seeing that other piece of it. Mm -hmm. And they're real um, close to each other. I mean... That's true, you could do a whole Christmas themed day if you yeah. wanted to there. Yeah. But I, I mean, Christmas is one of my favorite holidays, so having a place that's dedicated to just celebrating that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then all the stuff he brings in, he goes to New York every year to buy super expensive window decorations just to bring them and set them up there. Because they're going to destroy them without him. Yeah, if, if he didn't do this, then usually they throw them away. Mm -hmm. And they spend like millions to make these things, and then after December they're just like, alright, trash them, because they don't want anybody else to have them like competitors. But he manages to get in there and save the, and they're so well done. Mm -hmm. Like the art on these, it, mm -hmm. they are genius. So having that there, it's again open year round, so that's a really great place to go any time of the year to celebrate. Uh, probably hands down one of my favorite things we've ever done. And I think that's the cool thing about both of our top locations was not only was it movie themed, but both people that run those places, they keep um, movie memorabilia that even Cortland told us they destroy a lot of those props. Like he had one of the original Which is so ETs, sad. one of the original ETs, yeah. and they destroyed them. They don't even think about keeping that stuff. They don't think it's worth it. And then you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Now they probably like, wow, I wish we had kept that. Oh, and yeah. now they have to do recreations of all. Like, this could you stuff. imagine all those old like the Draculas and stuff, yeah. or the old Christmas movies? Oh, yeah. If we still had all those pieces, mm -hmm. and that shows why museums are important. And they, it wasn't even an accidental like destroying it was on purpose yeah there's like we don't have room for this yeah. get rid of it or they repurpose it for a different movie and cannibalize the parts mm -hmm. so it's awesome that people step up to kind of preserve our culture mm -hmm. and have it around for everybody to see. and pop culture is one of the best you know ways of showing that for sure amen to that and of course we can't talk about the places of 2021 without also mentioning the people of 2021 because we have definitely met some fantastic and colorful characters, wouldn't you say? I would definitely say so. 
I mean, without the people that run these places, we wouldn't get the full experience of all these places. Right. I mean, a, a building is just a building until you have somebody in it. But you have that full story of whatever's going on. And I mean, traveling, I mean, what is it without experiencing the culture? And I feel like the people are the way to keep culture alive. And maybe it's not always just from just a region, but even just a sp specific, like, thing you're seeing, that they're kind of like the curators of that, you know, item. And they're able to kind of like educate you from a first-hand experience because they have their real-world view on things that they're actually dealing with it day in and day out compared to like us that are just like reading in a book or just going for like an hour out of our time to go look at it. Right, and we saw people from multiple walks of life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have everything from you know Dr. Max Moore at Alcor, mm -hmm. you know, esteemed scientist, all in that field, and then we have people like Corey at the Soapbox Derby Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Two totally different fields of knowledge of what goes into it, the different hard work, and we got to, you know, kind of get a little piece of that from both of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's plenty of people we've met, though. But... Yeah, like Peter from the Branch Davidian. I mean, he was a part of that church. Not as much he wasn't there at the Waco compound when it happened, but he's definitely been a part of the Branch Davidian for a very long time. Affected his life yeah. a lot. Yeah, he's able to give us a pretty much a timeline from the very beginning, way before even the Waco compound happened, all the way to now like very detailed and he lives on that compound to this day he, and that's not something yeah. you're just going to read in a book of going you know somebody's personal experience of today yeah and then we got people like uh cindy over at where pigs fly farm i mean she runs a full-on farm that you can go and like pet animals and she's also the curator of that museum of, like that's right largest collection of pig things and then all the rescues that she does all those animals yeah. like that's just amazing and she's super like just you know open arms is allowing you in had we just had free roam to the place basically. exactly one of the most generous people like she was very sweet and definitely i mean even more unique people when we went to the sideshow museum in uranus missouri we had cat <laughs> yes who is one of the few people that can actually sword swallow in the world and she gave us a very you know interesting, interesting. experience <laughs> and interview for sure well like they say you never know what you're gonna find in uranus mm -hmm. but uh let's look back at some of these colorful characters Now something we thought would be kind of fun to do is to go over sort of our best of 2021 in a couple of categories. And uh, with a year full of pandemic and everything, people finally getting back to that kind of traveling, getting out there. I know uh, finances are a very important thing, just like always, especially in these kind of tougher times. Yep. So we figured we could go over what was our top, you know, cheap or free thing to do, you know, a cool travel thing that's not gonna bleed your wallet. Yeah. Yeah. I think the best thing that you could have is free. I completely agree. And you might not dig it in this day and age, but there is some places that are still willing to let you walk in the door, get the full experience, and it being free. They're a little few and far between, but they do exist. <laughs> Sometimes those are some of the better ones, too. So what would you say is your top free location that we went to? I think one of the top free locations we went to was a grocery store. Okay. And it was Stu Leonard's. And I understand as a grocery store, obviously, you're not going to have like an admission you know, feed to actually get in. <laughs> right. But I just think it was just so cool and unique. Just just being in Texas, there's not grocery stores like that where they have not just random animatronics, they have unique animatronics to Stu Leonard's. That's like their brand. They had jingles that talk about Either it's not the store, that section yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, it was great. I mean, I love, you know, Farm Fresh Fives. That was just like the coolest thing. For some reason, I just like things that aren't like inanimate objects that have faces on them. It's just, it's just kind of funny looking. 
They, they were, and, and they were memorable with the butter sticks and the uh, milk cards and it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it just gave me the vibes of Smitty's, but at a grocery store instead of like at a child's uh, pizza place. Right, yeah. somewhere that you know you're doing your regular adult stuff. Yeah. But oh, hey, wait, there's a singing produce over here. And I, I could see how you get numb of it if you were like going there every day grocery shopping. Like if it was your average everyday store. Yeah. yeah. But we don't have those here, so I can see how we're like. Oh. So we got excited. Yeah. We enjoyed it. <laughs> so what would be yours then? Uh, I guess kind of inspired by yours. Uh, I would have to say, and this surprised me. Mm -hmm. I didn't think going in it was going to be as interesting as it was. Uh -huh. But I think the Walmart Museum in Arkansas was probably my favorite. Yeah. It was an expansive museum. Like, this covered Sam Walton's life. It was in the location where he first started his store. And it went through everything in his life, what led up to him creating Walmart, what his original vision of it was. I know Walmart gets a bad rap. I know any kind of big corporation these days, sometimes rightfully, does get you know some negativity. But I feel like him as a man, his vision going forward, he had the best of intentions. And I think the company ran really well yep. when he was the one still running, you know, calling the shots. So it was really cool getting to see all that. It was a museum. You could probably spend a couple hours there if you were seeing everything. Yeah. And the fact that it was free, mm -hmm. I think that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, like we were saying, with the, he looked like a great man. He like knew what he was doing. And I think, honestly, I understand that the location itself could make it look more biased that he was a great man. But I think from what we were seeing, just clips oh, yeah. and just how he treated his employees, I think he was going in that direction of like he really cared about yeah a lot of places where you work talk about how you become a family yeah. and I, I feel like a lot of times that's just them talking but i really felt it with him like when's the last time you see people at walmart with flair yeah or, or that want to be there exactly yeah. <laughs> and i think that's something that he really did a good job with another good thing is it had that nice balance between like texts and timelines and actual artifacts i mean they had a whole entire truck in there and as much as yeah. it could have been just all propaganda, like, hey, go shop here, yeah. they didn't do that so much as just telling you about him and the store. And the history It wasn't just trying to push, like, go to Walmart. Yeah. It was just itself, and it showed you, I, I think that even though he became a very wealthy man, mm -hmm. he stayed pretty humble. Yeah. I think that he was, you know, a, a good business icon to look up to. And it, it gave me vibes of one we mentioned last year for our free, the Pizza Hut one, where it gave a good balance ah. of the timeline, the people, and artifacts from the actual Exactly, place. something that kind of shows you and the And the original location. Kind and of you thing. get to see how it evolved yeah. and what it became today from what it started out as. And see, free things. There you, you go. You can find them, you just got to go out there and look for them. <laughs> so if you got any cool free things you want us to check out this next year, let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, but speaking of best of... I think uh, we've definitely got to bring up Hall of Fames. Yep. We went to quite a few Hall of Fames this last year. We, let's see, we had chess, we, we had, had um, um, bowling, but golf, the golf over St. Hall Augustine. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, we had the soapbox derby. Oh, that one was pretty good. Yeah. But I think we can both agree there was one Hall of Fame that we enjoyed the most. Uh, what would you say that is? It's definitely the NFL Hall of Fame. That's right, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That. It, it's, I've always wanted to go there. Yeah, I mean, it's been one of those locations I've been always looking forward to seeing, you know. People always try to say, what's there to do in Ohio? Well, we found out very quickly. Oh, so, that, Ohio, don't listen to the bad stuff they say. You're great. There's yeah. a lot out there. But, I mean, the NFL <laughs> was like cream of the crop, you know. You go into Akron and just seeing the history and just going back. Even past, I mean, a lot of people don't even know what, like, the history of the NFL was 30 years ago. I mean, they took it back to the beginning of oh, the yeah. NFL. They had some of the old uniforms, I mean, they had the old trophies. They had they teams all. that didn't even exist anymore. I mean, teams that are older than the Packers and the Bears, and even some of those, like the Bears before they were even called the Bears. There's and, places that had teams that aren't even cities yeah. anymore. Like, and most of them yeah. around the Ohio area, because I mean, it just logistically, you had to have them close. Yep. I mean, it's, it was a very cool experience when it came to All the whole things are great in their own ways, but I think the NFL one, I just enjoyed the most because that's, that's honestly the sport I like the most of all. I agree. I mean, uh, I'm not quite as into sports as you, but I've definitely been a lifelong football fan, as yeah. of you. Yeah. And I think this is one of those places that lived up to the hype. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to go there. You know, sometimes when you want to go to a place for so long, once you get there, it's a little anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. I wasn't disappointed in the least. No. And then especially walking into the room with all the busts uh -huh. of everybody through the actual Hall of Fame through the ages, that was amazing. Yeah. And I mean, it wasn't free, but that one I feel like you definitely got your money's worth. It was very expansive. Every penny. Very detailed. Really great artifacts all together. You, that's an entire day right yeah. there. That very, very informative. Great artifacts. And they even change it up every now and then to keep it fresh. So you can end up going back and seeing something new. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think we should move on to a category that you specialize in with your favorite food of 2021. Oh, yeah. But before we get to the, uh, the big answer to that, we actually have some uh, extra little clips from this year that we're going to show you now of some uh, interesting food that Blake tried out on our way. Let's see if I can remember what they were. <laughs> All right, so today we're at Emo's Pizza in St. Louis, and we're gonna try what is their style of pizza, St. Louis style. Kind of the same as a Chicago style or New York style, but unique to their own place. It's going to be a thin crust pizza with a special mixture of a couple different cheeses that they call Provel. And this one is called the Excellent Pizza. And they recommend that you start it at one of the four corners, so. We'll just pick one, see how it tastes. It's crispy, and the pizza itself is pretty good. Probably give it four stars. All right, so today we will be trying the conch fritters with a uh, key lime sauce. It's really good. It's almost like a, a little bit more flavorful crab cake. And this right here, this is what they won some awards for. This is the conch chowder. A little competition that they have around here, and they've won with it. Let's see how this one tastes. That's really good too. Um, I'm gonna have to give this one a four and a half stars. Key lime dipping sauce was definitely a little bit mild, not as overwhelming, so kind of made a good uh, compliment. I'm gonna have to give the chowder a four. Both really good options. Yeah, I remember that conch now. It was a very good uh, restaurant slash just conch in general. And a lot of good food in Florida, to be fair. I'm sure yep. we'll check out some more soon. Yeah. <laughs> so. We've now come to it. Speaking of food, what is your top pick of 2021 for food? Uh, it's gonna be a cop out because it's more like a compilation okay. of things. I'm gonna have to say State Fair of Texas food choices, just all of them together. Just all of them? All of them together, just all of them. <laughs> I mean, it just, if, it, if you really had the money and the stomach, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if it's even that possible. I don't even know if uh, I don't know if Joey all of that. Chestnut could even eat everything that is option-wise at the State Fair in one day. But um, that's at least a whole weekend. Oh yeah, hope, right? it's just a great experience. If you haven't been to the State Fair of Texas, you need to go. Definitely, if you're a big foodie, it's just there's a lot of unique things, and it's just they have so many new ones every year. Absolutely, that are like repeats. And of course, being from Texas, we've gone every year to the State Fair. Yeah. It just, it just becomes just ingrained into your culture when it comes to being a Texan. Right, but speaking of state fairs, as much as we've always loved ours, you know, going out there, traveling, there's a lot of signs we always see for other places' state fairs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were thinking we need to hit all of them, don't you think? Uh, we were completionists ourselves, you know. That's true. We've been seeing all the Capitol buildings, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Now why not, while we're visiting these states, why not check out the state fairs? Yeah. So that is a new series you can look forward to starting next year, 2022. We are going to do our best to hit every state fair in the country. Yeah, not right. the same year, but we're going to right. oh, God. We'll get a start on it for sure. That's right. We'll start the series. We'll see where that goes. So uh, if you got any hot tips about the state fair around you, let us know which ones are worth going to first. We got to start making our list. Mm -hmm. uh, so speaking of series, we've got a couple of those already going, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and a lot of them, like one that was definitely new for 2021, which is, you know, Duel of the Voyagers. That's right. Very, that's really fun. Definitely a very unique uh, look at what we do that's not just the general thing. Right, just kind of having fun, doing stuff in the areas. But showcasing the actual location as well, which it wouldn't make as much sense if we didn't actually play the game as well. Yeah, you can't just look. If you got a mini golf course, you got to play. Yeah. Another good thing, though, is if you can think of any unique punishments for the loser, that isn't something we've already done, 
it'd really help us out a lot. Yeah, if there's anything you want to see Blake do, because obviously he's going to lose again. As it's long as it's mini does. golf, yes, it's going to happen. Probably. Well, it's not only going to be mini golf. We'll give you a chance. Yeah. Well, we've got some other things maybe in the works that'll yeah. give you a slightly more, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then another series we're definitely keeping going: Cemetery Safaris. Yep, that's that's definitely one of the more unique and things, uh, just places in general that you can go to as a graveyard. Oh yeah. I mean, how many people can you think of that have seen even like ten cemeteries in their life? And I, I can tell you this now, I don't know, we get a little crazy saying this, we've definitely been to more than 10 cemeteries. Uh, Sometimes we go to 10 cemeteries in one trip. Um, but there's a lot of unique, just, just I mean, just the sculptures on some of these. Just, oh yeah, just, just the artistry put into just yeah. the tombstones, or the stories behind them, like yeah. in our uh, unique ones, and then the urban legends yeah. with some of them. There's so many fascinating things in there. So I think that's definitely a series we're gonna keep doing for quite a while, right? Oh, yeah. I, until we run out of graves, I guess, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we haven't got... People home. keep dying, we'll keep filming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just the, you know, the necessary evil of the world, but... But yeah, so... Uh, it's a good way to honor people and like kind of showcase, you know, the person that they are. Yeah, and, and I think it's safe to say, just a little bit of a teaser, we definitely have a new Cemetery Safari coming out in January. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I wonder which group it's going to be this time. Uh, you'll just have to tune in and find out with everybody else. Yeah. So I think with like 2021, another good one that we should definitely talk about is, you know, sometimes we don't like to, you know, have that little bad memory that comes in with it, but some of the more difficult filming episodes that we've had through That's the That's true. I mean, when you're traveling, doing stuff like this, some things are a little more difficult to film than others. And we're a little bit sticklers when it comes to like getting a complete episode. Sometimes we cover hundreds of miles of ground just to get the episode out there. Oh yeah, just one episode can sometimes take us more than a day to do in different places. It's mm -hmm. a lot of work. Uh, but it's a good thing to talk about. What do you think is the most difficult one we did this year? I definitely think one of the more difficult ones was the uh, Rhode Island Con. Okay. Just because we did that all in one day. I mean, and we literally drove all through the state. Like, yeah. it is the smallest state, so. <laughs> but it still took all day. I mean, you think that those potatoes are close together, but we went from sun up to sun down. We found as many of those potatoes as we could find, while also getting other locations that weren't potatoes. And I think it was a great day. Oh yeah. We, we have seen Rhode Island. Yeah. That is. <laughs> I mean, obviously there's other locations in Rhode Island that we need to go back to and actually go to. But when it, if you're just going to have like a flyby tour of Rhode Island, we saw most of what you could see. We, we saw a decent amount yeah. of the highlights, I would yeah. say. Some of the sections not everybody goes I would, to. I would say the terrain at least. If not oh, the yeah. actual locations, the terrain of like this is the top to the bottom of Rhode Island. I will say, even being one of the smallest, Little Rhodey was a beautiful state. Yep. Very nice, nice, very people. nice people. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, I think one that was also very difficult since we're talking about how we went to drive. Uh, also, I had a cold really bad the whole time we filmed this one. Uh, the New Mexico comp with all the different locations. We literally drove hundreds of miles in this one day just to get all these different places to put together. That was crazy. We were climbing and hiking up to those caves. We, you know, we were going down mountain roads to see where into the valleys, into yeah. the valleys where all the prairie dogs were. Yeah, that was tough. You remember that? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely like not just from like actually getting out of the car and walking, but just a lot of steep, you know, winding paths where you're not seeing where you're going. Oh yeah. And we went again, sun up to sun down. We were definitely doing it. Another one similar to New Mexico that we did that we didn't mention is the uh, Route 66 in Arizona. That was another yes. one of those. We were there all day. Yeah. Where we started from, I think. I, uh, was it the Grand Canyon maybe we were like yeah I think we, have, we went straight from the airport to the Grand Canyon and from there it was Route just 66. a whole day Route 66 doing the stops yep. seeing everything until we passed out in our wigwams that night yeah <laughs> but it was a great experience for sure That's oh yeah we were most excited about probably the most in interesting place I've slept in at least top five I guess we'll, we'll, we'll save that for another uh list. we'll do okay yeah. yeah we'll save our yeah. top five accommodations uh, yeah of where we slept at night <laughs> Well, like you said, you know, great memories. I think at the end of the day, no matter how difficult an episode is, it's all been worth it. Yeah. Especially this year, there were so many great things. Uh, you know what? This is a great place to throw in a montage of 2021.
So as you can see, it was definitely an awesome year. Yes, it was. So, I don't know if you remember, our last wrap up, we had some lists going of our top three places that we wanted to see this year. Yeah. And uh, we didn't go to all of them, of course. No. But we both managed to get one off of our lists. That's pretty impressive, I think. Yeah. You want to talk about the one that you got to take off? Yeah, if I remember, I think it was uh, Roswell that I picked. It was always one of those locations I wanted to go to. And I mean, it was definitely, I understand, it's like, you know, you never meet your heroes kind of thing. I'd say the same thing with some of these locations. You're never going to get the full expectations that you had of the location. But for what it was, I still think it was a very pleasant experience with Roswell. They definitely Just, love aliens. Though. Yeah, very good like alien theming, you know. Some parts did feel tourist trap, you know. Like, I think that's but, a given. But that's just how some like if that is your DNA as a location, a, a city is that that's what you're going to go with. Well, because they didn't have to lean into that. No, they you know what they did, I think is pretty cool. Because we've been to some places where they don't milk it as much. You know? No, yeah, they they don't acknowledge major things that they could. Yeah. So it's really cool that the people are so accepting of this kind of their place and culture. And it helps keep the economy going in that little area that oh, more yeah. than likely they'd be. Not a ghost town, but close to it without it. And I don't know about you, one of my favorite McDonald's of all time. Yeah, very Great unique theming. architecture at least. Yeah. <laughs> very unique. Uh, mine is kind of similar to yours, but as opposed to Aliens, my place kind of got into a little more supernatural. I really wanted to go spend Halloween in Salem. Yeah. And we did it with all of their witches, with all the craziness going on there. Uh, I definitely see what you mean a little bit about expectations versus reality. I kind of went in expecting a totally different thing than what we ended up seeing, but I was also surprised by some of it to where I'm still very enjoyable. I liked seeing just everybody there was excited to be there. Mm -hmm. It was one of those places that there was just something in the air, that kind of Halloween feeling. Even if you were just walking down the street with shops, mm -hmm. it was still like something unique and special. It didn't feel like you were just at your hometown or whatever walking around. Yeah. Um, they did a good job of also leaning into what they were known for. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, another one, it's not on our top three, but I'd say even like Colonial Williamsburg. Did oh, absolutely. They go absolutely. with what they are, and that is their DNA and their identity. is. And that's one that I went to. Like I was telling you, I went there when I was very young. I grew up going there. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And going back as an adult, it still felt it's very different but similar at the same time. It's interesting how when you revisit a place years later. It kind of sparks those embers that were just kind of dying out. Exactly, and just yeah. Just kind of reignited. And, and it kind of builds more of, I guess, a complete picture yeah. of things. Yeah. You know, painting it with some new tones. Mm -hmm. So that was really interesting. Uh, but since we've taken those off the list, I think we need to add at least one more to replace those to kind yeah. of keep up with our, our dream location. So yeah. where in the country would you like to go this year? So mine is, just like how we took off a time sensitive one for yours, uh, I'm gonna add another time sensitive one. This oh, one's okay. gonna be uh, Coney Island in New York. I've always wanted to go during the 4th of July time period when they also are doing the uh, Nathan's uh, hot dog eating contest. Oh! I would love to see them live and get the entire Coney Island experience all together. That'd that, be really cool. That's like perfect for you. We got theme parks, we've got food, like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> I love the 4th of July. It's a great holiday. I love that fireworks. Especially in New York, one of yeah. the greatest cities in the yeah. entire world. We'd have to do a lot more uh, maneuvering to get it done, but it'd be something that'd be really cool. I mean, we got Salem done during Halloween. There's only That's so right. much. That's right. Who says we can't do New York for 4th of July? Yeah. I like it. Uh, I think mine, not time-based, so we can make a pick when we go here. Yeah. I have always wanted to go. It's a little museum in Michigan. Okay. It is called Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum. Okay. Just the fact that it all starts with M's is enough for me to want to go. Mm -hmm. But it is filled with centuries of mechanical, you know, automatons, different machines, arcade games, different toys, mm -hmm. all thrown together, and it looks like like a magical warehouse almost of stuff. <laughs> it looks absolutely amazing. I think it'd be perfect for us. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna add that to mine. Sounds like two great locations to have for sure. So hey, fingers crossed we're gonna make it out to both of those this year. So, another thing that we wanted to mention, this is actually our 100th episode. Does it feel like it? At, it feels like the time just flew by. Yeah. And with the 100th episode, we have a quick announcement of something that we've talked about a couple of times, and we are finally making it happen. We are officially launching our Patreon for the new year. So link to that is going to be down in the description. Uh, there's also going to be a video link that explains a little more in depth. We don't want to go into all of it right now with this episode, 
but there are going to be three different tiers of awesome stuff. We are going to have them uh, based off of different cryptids. It's called the Abnormal Army, which you know, we like to consider you guys as part of our force, you know. So we are going to have the Sasquatch Sergeants, right? Yeah. We are going to have the Lake Monster Lieutenants, and then the Mothman Majors. So, like I said, link is going to be down in the description. Make sure you check that out if you want to support us and get some really cool stuff for doing it, you know? Yeah. Not to mention, there are going to be some very special detour episodes that you'll be able to see on our Patreon. But enough about that. Let's give everybody a little taste of what the first episode of 2022 is going to be. You think that sounds good? Yeah, just like last year, we'll start off with a bang. An episode that we both enjoy. We both enjoyed filming and... I think it's just one of those locations that everyone's going to enjoy because it's unique. Couldn't have said You're it not going to see it everywhere you go. There you go. So uh, let's roll it. We're here to investigate a place that is purely devoted to demons and spirits. So this actually helps you, I guess, see if there's spirits nearby or energy. What is it? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. And our last room, this is the one that has the strongest amount of activity and uh, possibly demonic items or things with spirits attached to them. So we're going to very carefully head in here. I have this one double latched, just to show you how serious this is. Wow, I forgot how awesome that episode is. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be something that everyone enjoys. Oh yeah, you guys are gonna love this one. So January 5th, that's when it's coming out. Make sure you're there. Uh, I think that's about it for the wrap up. Do you have anything else you wanted to touch on? Man, unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end, so... That's true, but at the same time, we're here at the fresh beginnings of 2022. So, thank you to everyone out there for being a part of our voyages and just helping us do this. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Absolutely. We hope you have an amazing, wonderful new year, and thank you for watching Abnormal Voyages. My name is David. My name is Blake. Thanks for tagging along. We'll see you next year.